Everything is awesome. And if you do that, and then I want to click here, I think. Here, I think. Yes. <laughs> I want to, I guess, let's see, uh, wait, 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 that's done, and then we go back, then we do, yes, no, fuck, so many stuff, okay, and then we do that, it's time for some uh, yeah Formula One, but mostly w Williams uh, racing stuff. Uh, but we will start with why Daniel Ricciardo is strong, uh, struggling in F1 again. And I mean, yesterday I felt the race came with some washed opinions on uh, Alonso. So, hey, maybe they will come with some more washed opinions on Daniel Ricciardo. And I will, yeah, oh shit, I will be doing a lot of fishing stuff. At least what I planned yesterday that I will do today, so... I will be doing that. And uh, and trying to make sense to what what feature I have and I don't maybe have. Well, I don't know what fish I don't have. But maybe I'm clear on what I have. But while I'm doing that, let's see if how washed the race opinion is about Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo is just three races into a crucial season that was meant to propel him back into a crucial season. I mean, if you stop with that, Daniel Ricciardo is in a crucial season. From whose point of view? You could say it's crucial for him to I mean, I guess if they don't want him, if they want someone else in uh, the car. I mean, uh, all talking point is the, uh, uh, that uh, Max is leaving. So why should this be crucial? If Max is leaving, you just, then you just move up. Then in Ricardo, you can be super bad. But as long as Max leaves, you move up him and then you have lost on a free seat. Like, uh, not a big problem. Maybe for Ricardo, that is still bad, but hey, better for Perez. Dream Red Bull racing seat, but is instead starting to feel like a repeat of his McLaren nightmare. This has not been a repeat that I wouldn't say. I mean, the last year, he scored some good points and was maybe sometimes better than uh, Sonoda. I don't know. Maybe one race he was, maybe. But he scored points. When Sonoda did that, he scored big points that season. That made uh, so Alfa Tauri almost passed Williams. So he had done some good stuff. In the start to 2024, that Ricardo. Maybe not now, but. I mean. So now that have uh, equal uh, much. No, Hamilton have eight points, but soon Sunoda that will overtake Hamilton in points. What? What does that say about Hamilton? They had been hoping for at Red Bull's second team RB, and not because the team is failing to hold up its end of the bargain. RB started the year broadly where we expected, with a car capable of challenging for the top ten. 
Yuki Tsunoda finally delivered on that potential in Australia, qualifying 8th and scoring the team's first points of the season by finishing 7th. And it really is Tsunoda leading the charge, as Ricardo's form is the underwhelming part of the equation. Tsunoda's 3-0 up in qualifying and should be 3-0 up in race finishes too. It was only a team orders call that let Ricardo beat him in Bahrain, where Tsunoda undermined his good start to the season with his emotional overreaction after the chequered flag, which you probably remember well. In Saudi Arabia, Ricardo suffered the Yes, uh, we do. The embarrassment of spinning late in the Grand Prix. True. And at his home race in Australia, he only qualified 18th after having a lap time deleted for a track limits offence. He cut a baffled and clearly frustrated figure after qualifying in Melbourne in particular, and not just because of that Q1 elimination. When he said he felt that deleted lap was all I had, and was still over a tenth slower than what Sonoda managed, there were worrying echoes of his difficult years at McLaren. We'll get into that in more detail very shortly, but rather than getting bogged down in his position, it was clearly far more painful to Ricardo that he simply couldn't be as quick as Sonoda. Ricardo admitted he was puzzled that his deleted lap was still not good enough compared to Yuki because it felt like a proper lap. And having punched in three poles and many more great qualifying performances during his career, Ricardo knows what that usually means. But it still wasn't enough. And to make matters worse, he was speaking to the media while qualifying was still going on. And just as Sonoda put in a blinding Q2 time to make the top 10 for the first time this season. Ricardo subsequently admitted that even with the track improving, he would have been unable to match that bigger step, which he appeared genuinely concerned by. And at the end of the Melbourne weekend, which finished with Ricardo eight seconds outside the points in a lapsed 12th, he admitted he had expected a much stronger start to 2024 than this. Riga da nesta vi. Oh shit, bad time. Go away. Now back. Given he felt at the limit of the car, Ricardo wants more checks. I thought I would say. Um... I feel like everyone wants to start this season better, but hey, let's point that out that he feels he's fight. ...be conducted because he's not I mean, fully he convinced have, it's working as it should be. It's, it's worryingly me. similar to his concerns in Monaco back in 2021, when he hit the first nadir of his McLaren stint and felt that car problems must be to blame for his lack of pace. Subsequent checks by McLaren revealed that wasn't the case and that it was instead all about the way he was driving an admittedly tricky car. That came to dominate the next year and a half, wrecked Ricardo's confidence, depleted his stock as a driver and led to him leaving McLaren before the end of his contract. We can't be sure yet whether Ricardo's facing another fundamental incompatibility. Wait, the fuck do you mean? What are not sure? Ricardo's facing another fundamental incompatibility and led to him leaving McLaren before the end of his contract. We can't be sure yet whether Ricardo's facing another fundamental... We... Cont so you're not sure, but you're telling why. Man... Incompatibility with the car, just simply struggling to be as quick as his teammate, or genuinely facing some kind of hidden car problem. He's adamant that he's not in the same situation as McLaren. What does say, Corporal? He almost got in... He, his lap got deleted that made so he didn't got to Q2. If he did that, he would maybe score points. And would that have shown that he was still bad? Or what do you mean? That's so bad. Aaron, because he feels confident in the car in areas like... He feels this... Okay, let's see. It's not like McLaren where I was a bit unsure and can't push the car there. Okay, so he gave you the information that he's not struggling. It's not the McLaren days and still you make a video like it is. Breaking and slow corner entry, which yeah, is where he tripped up take. against Lando Norris. In Australia, for example, much of Ricardo's Q1 deficit to Sonoda was down to being unable to carry as much speed through the high speed turn 9-10 left-right sweep. Ricardo has generally sounded happy with this team and made some progress during his interrupted part season last year to better suit his style, including improving the mid-corner rotation characteristics. He seemed to clock during the Australia weekend how the narrative had developed, because after the race, he was at pains to stress it's not a confidence thing. 
or a matter of questioning what the hell is this car going to do when I brake or when I turn. It's that he cannot carry the speed he sees that Sonoda can. But even if the on-track specifics aren't the same as McLaren, what Ricardo says feels eerily familiar. No, There's at it least doesn't. a sentiment of lacking answers, even though he says his focus is to stay calm and stay on course and insist. So the Paris also struggling with his, with his car because he doesn't get the same performance as Max Verstappen. Yeah, actually true. Yeah, true. Right. Or is is it he's trying to set a goal that might be really hard? For him to maybe succeed. Nah. This he has He's the struggling. confidence he will find more in himself. Offered the chance in Melbourne to address the question of whether the car characteristics are not as he wants them, Ricardo pointed to his doubts about the car itself. Ricardo doesn't believe there are any known differences between his car and Sonoda's, like, for example, any kind of weight disparity as can sometimes arise. But he intends to keep asking questions and make sure that I've got something I think is capable. He even got given a full new set of engine components after qualifying in Australia. This is all clearly in the search for some no, problem that, that might explain the deficit to Sonoda and his general struggles. It echoes Ricardo's sentiments after the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix weekend, which triggered checks that led the team to find some small issues with the car that potentially inhibited his performance, but not by enough to explain his single lap pace deficit to Sonoda there. RB will doubtlessly take another close look at the car, and it might be there's something still not right that's holding Ricardo back, but nothing from the team after qualifying or around the race itself indicated this was the case in Australia. He finished the race saying yet again that he hoped RB might yet find something on the car which has an air of grasping at straws. And given the McLaren years, there's still a big question mark about whether the limitation might just be a driver who's still struggling to get the most out of the car and recapture the sky-high oh level God, of his F1 pomp. Ricardo simply hasn't had the start to the season oh, he shit. needs and pressure is building after Red Bull Motorsport advisor Helmut Marko's recent comments that no. Ricardo needs to raise his Damn game. It. That's disappointing Deep given the it. hopes he could set himself on a trajectory that would allow him to get back to his best in F1, an outcome that feels more distant now than it has at any point since he returned to F1 midway through last year. Red Bull started oh the season God, knowing that it had several options for Max Verstappen's teammate in 2025. Incumbent Sergio Perez has always appeared to be the number one choice. At least that was implied when Red Bull team principal Christian Horner described that seat as... Oh, Christian Horner will leave. He will not be left when uh, <laughs> that is kind of finally Jons Red Bull, if Red Bull even exists. I mean, I just for stop and talking doomsday times for Red Bull, so... Maybe the team doesn't exist when finally Ricardo will join them. That's sad. Then Ricardo could maybe be back in Red Bull, but I mean, if you follow the news and just for Stappen, they will never. It will not be a Red Bull when he will arrive. That's sad. Checos to lose. But Perez is out of contract at the end of 2024, so really. And uh, but who cares? Max Verstappen will. Live. Wait the fuck, that I must, we, we must look this up, and let's see, can I do this easily, no I need to, I wanna see, have, they must have done the Max Verstappen going to, yeah, they done the civil war, yes, uh, have they done more, Max Verstappen threat to Red Bulls, Wearing F1 team, yes. Have they done anything more about... Uh, what's going on with Red Bull's Christian Horner controversy at F1 testing? Okay, so, I mean, they... Uh, they are probably on the same page as some other people that uh, Max Verstappen would clearly leave. Red Bull for, I don't know, fucking Mercedes, they so good. So, why even mention Sir Paris? Max Verstappen will leave. And Sergio Paris stay, and then Ricardo can just join. Super easy. He ha and Lawson will join here. And for some fucking reason, 
Here yeah, will Max Verstappen be in this good team car that Lewis Hamilton for some reason want to leave and go to Ferrari? And you share this is good. Has as much to prove as anybody, especially after he went Jeez. missing for so much of 2023, and Verstappen could have won Red Bull both titles single-handedly. Then factor in Ricardo being something of a Horner pet project, for it was Horner who led Let's the charge of Ricardo's return, and his immense marketability, and his good relationship with Verstappen, and it looked like Red Bull. Oh, what a good. Yeah, I'm, uh, who cares? Max Verstappen will leave to Mercedes. Wait, what? A tailor-made Perez replacement if it needed one. But Ricardo's not doing the business. Perez was until Melbourne, where he struggled as well. That might have been a handy reprieve for Ricardo had ex Red Bull Junior Carlos Sainz not won the Grand Prix and then. Oh, yeah, they are in that boat. Carlos Sainz will clearly join Red Bull for some reason. Alert. He has a reason. Red Bull signed him. In. That's a weird reason. And also I went to the wrong elevator. Praise from Horner, who more than hinted that free agent signs was on the team's radar for 2025, given he's being... I mean, Lawson is also on the Rudders radar. Every person that Rudders could sign, aren't they all on the radar? People in Formula 2, aren't they also on the radar? Maybe Formula 3 even? No, this doesn't mean anything. The only thing that matters is who they actually want to sign. Released by Ferrari. Uh, not who they can sign. It's also worth considering where Verstappen's future and the potential availability of Fernando Alonso fits into this. Verstappen's been heavily linked with a Red Bull exit amid the power struggle between the team's leadership figures. Were Verstappen to go, Alonso is believed to be viewed as a realistic alternative for Red Bull, which might explain why Horner seemed to be threatening to call Verstappen's bluff when the prospect of Verstappen walking away became such a prominent talking point during the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix weekend. Alonso would likely jump at the chance to join the dominant team of this that F1 era, but he probably needs Verstappen to walk away to get that opportunity. Uh, uh Okay, did they say it's what I was talking about? Oh my god, they pick picture of Fernando. Holy fuck. Victor Verstappen walking away became... Oh shit, there we have it. I need to hear everything. It's also worth considering where Verstappen's future and the potential availability of Fernando Alonso fits in. Yeah, Fernando will leave and for some reason also get a seat in front of this. Verstappen's been heavily linked with a Red Bull exit. By who? Not me. I don't think that. I think that's. I mean, that's just a shop and washed opinion. I mean, have we ever been good in Formula One? I asked uh, Maki Schumacher about that. I mean, like, the only good he was was to prepare Max Verstappen to be really good in Formula One. Nothing else have he made have been good in Formula One. Amid the power struggle between the teams, lead yeah, the big power struggle. Like, what kind of power do just for stopping even have? Than being having washed opinions. Sometimes, every year. Leadership figures. Were Verstappen to go, Alonso is believed to be viewed as a real. <laughs> yeah. Why? I mean, is people so d desperate to have someone else win championships or wins from the British people or... Why why this talking point? Can't uh, Lewis Hamilton be heavily linked <laughs> to Rebel also? Maybe it is something in his contract that... If Ferrari make a bad call for him in a race, he can leave whenever he wants. So he can join Red Bull after just one race. 
realistic alternative for Red Bull, which might explain why Horner seemed to be threatening to call Verstappen's bluff when the prospect of Verstappen walking away became such a prominent talking point during the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix weekend. Alonso would yeah, people said that something will happen before or under or after Australia. It's after Australia. Will some news about M Max Verstappen happen now? Surely it will. Surely not copium and lies and bad takes. Surely not. Likely jump at the chance to join the dominant team of this F1 Definitely. era. But he probably needs Verstappen to walk away to get that opportunity. Yeah, will that happen now? The other thing Red Bull needs to consider in all this is whether or not Ricardo's worth keeping Liam Lawson on the sidelines for. Last year. Yeah, they will surely keep him on the sideline. On the side. Sidelines. They wouldn't, if Max leave, they wouldn't see us. Oh, we can promote Ricardo and then we can promote Lawson to be in our junior team. No, surely not. Just stand in success. Surely we will sign. Carlos Sainz, Alonso, Alex Albon, yeah, who more? Before we even try to make Lawson have a seat. This is a looming threat to Ricardo. The three into two driver problem was resolved in Ricardo's and Sonoda's favour for 2024, but Red Bull has promised to find Lawson a race seat no buckets. later than 2025. It's an interesting subplot in the broader Red Bull power dynamic. Ricardo is Horner's man, Sonoda is there for Honda, and Lawson's the driver Marco seems to really rate, and wanted in the seat for 2024 after he did well replacing Ricardo last year. But Marco didn't get his wish, and he's been putting pressure on Ricardo and Sonoda to a lesser degree for a reason. It seems more than likely that what Marco wants is to get Lawson into an RB seat one way or... Oh, oh. so why even mention Alonso? Or color signs, or probably before Alex Albon. Or another, and at this rate, it would have to be Ricardo that makes way. The question is whether it ever. Okay, he makes way to Red Bull, right? Surely he will go there. What should be? Gets Not to that dramatic there, point. Huh? Whether Horner or the RB bosses or Red Bull's parent company see it that way. Or maybe whether Ricardo himself says, I really don't fancy going through another year of this again. That doesn't sound like the case from Ricardo. Yes, he has said that. He doesn't feel like the McLaren days. So, why are you talking about his struggling? Ricardo's side, as he insists his focus and his motive. Like it's a struggling. Why doesn't Ricardo struggling have fun again? Um, everything is about. And then I'm not team struggling. Motivation is unchanged, but the rumors have already started. There was a yeah, the rumors from who the Jos Verstappen again, maybe. Suggestion in the Melbourne paddock that Ricardo might be facing something of an ultimatum, a line the New Zealand Herald newspaper is now pushing. It would be very drastic if the situation was as simple as Ricardo having until Miami in May to turn things around or be replaced. But there's at least a little pressure building to improve. The little impression to improve. The smallest little... Yeah. So you could say it's probably nothing then. If just little, then who cares? One curiosity in all this is the guy who's beating Ricardo might not get much out of it. At the start of the year, we were wondering whether Sonoda and Ricardo could. And uh, this, I strongly believe, because Sonoda is only there because Honda, they will not promote into Red Bull. He will maybe stay in uh, Toro Rosso. No, fuck me. Visa Cash App Formula One team or. Hey. No, Visa Cash App RB Formula One team. Must be that.
Let's see, where do we have the Nah, no, I always been so good at saying that name. Visa, Cash App, RB, Formula 1 team must it be. Where do we have the names? And you can't go to an official site because, I mean, in the point scoring, uh, if you search Google and uh, how the points are, you get Alpha Tauri, so that's really good. Let's see, if you go in there, let's see, it must be that, or we can have that. If you go to teams, let's see. I think it's just say RB in, on this side. Yeah. I mean, this is just a prank. Yeah, we have the real name. Vista Cash App RB Formula 1 team. Okay, so it RB should be in between the Formula 1 team and Vista Cash App. Fucking. What do you do, Formula 1? Don't you prove this good name? I mean, Andrati is worse, right? And Cadillac. I mean, the RB, that's so much better for Formula 1's future. Okay, let's go back to this. Man, the race is so bad. ...could end up cannibalizing each other's careers. Sonoda's never seem to have Red Bull's confidence, as Marco says... Why would they? Why would they have confidence with someone that's come from Honda that don't... isn't part of the team anymore? And he could maybe easily join Aston Martin. Was concerned by his self control outbursts and error proneness. So if Ricardo looked anything less than stunning against Yuki, it would count for nothing. But as there have been so many it doubts about Ricardo as well, oh, Sonoda yeah. edging him, him wouldn't necessarily move the needle either. It just seemed possible that a likely outcome, not even just a plausible one, was 2024 ending with Red Bull shrugging its shoulders at both of them. Maybe that won't come to pass. Australia was a really good response from Sonoda to Marco's hurry up, and Marco then praised Sonoda effusively afterwards. But we still doubt Sonoda's got a realistic shot at a Red Bull racing seat in the future. While Mar so, this clip, so you can maybe change this clip to why, uh, let's see. Why Sunoda not struggling if he's a cash up RB Formula 1 team will still make Ricardo go to Red Bull. Marco seems to have a soft spot for his speed. There are the frustrations about the emotional outburst and Horner's clearly not won over. He even turned a question about whether Red Bull should take Sunoda more seriously as an option into an answer about Carlos Sainz in Australia, claiming Red Bull wants to field the best pairing that we can, so might need to look outside its current driver pool. So Okay, where well, Kirsha we know that, but we want to f to f feel the b the best pairing that we can at Red Bull Racing. Okay, so they at Lightning strikes. They are ruining my garden. Burning down my trees. Okay, so one thing is a what we want to feel the best pairing. Okay, the best pairing, I mean, Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton, is that the best pairing? Maybe Verstappen and Leclerc, they could also be the best pairing. Wanting to do something is different to what you actually will do. I mean, I do Christian Horner want to visit Cash Up RB from one team? To be second best to Red Bull. Okay, so I'm gonna get something. He wants. He wants that. <laughs> Will it happen? I don't know. Probably not. So Sonoda might find himself just seat warming until his main backer Honda leaves the Red Bull teams for Aston Martin in 2026. Yeah, 
When that happens, he seems extremely unlikely to stay on Red Bull's books, unless something dramatically changes or he does win the team's bosses over. Sonoda hasn't given up on doing that, but the best thing he can do now is make his case for any drive as strong as possible. There have been times it's been hard to imagine anyone else picking Or he will just stay in Visa Cash Up RB Formula 1 team until he gets the, um, the OK sign from Aston Martin and after that Aston Martin will be cash run to why they did the OK sign and maybe get reported, who knows, for mistreating people because they did the OK sign. Sonoda up, but at his best, he is clearly worthy of a spot on the grid. Sonoda said that he wants to increase his value as an F1 driver, and conquering Ricardo is the best way to do that. It still might not be enough for Sonoda to transform his own fate, but it would surely wipe away the last remaining bit of stock that Ricardo still has. Yes, nice. Oh, grey, yellow, grey, pink. Yeah, quite right. Cob white. Okay, we go and... Okay, let's see. But... Ricardo struggles. And I mean, sure, we didn't have a good first race. And maybe worse, second race when he... Spun around, but his third race could have been good. He almost have a good qualifying, and maybe if he had a good race, maybe he would have got points. So it's I wouldn't say it's equal to McLaren days. And he himself says it's not the same as being in the McLaren. So already there, two things that doesn't make him struggling. And <laughs> lost on a fret. I mean, this I would say if Max Verstappen stay and that he will 100% probably do, and they also p p uh, keep Paris, I would say I feel like they will also keep Sonoda and uh, Ricardo in the Visa Cash App RB Formula 1 team. And probably try to make Lawson get in a seat for Williams. Until they feel like, no, nah, it's time for you to know that to leave. Or it's time for you, Perez, to leave. So Ricardo can go up. And we can put the Lawson is in our better car. That's what I would say, I believe in. Okay, but... No, he's done with that. Hopefully, if I not choose to then watch their everything that went wrong for Red Bull in F1 Australia GP podcast meltdown. Let's see. How do they on the podcast? Yeah, the thumbnail look really weird on their podcast latest video. But now, probably time for some fun stuff. Or not, it's <laughs> William stuff, so I don't know. It could be something or it could not be good. Welcome to the Williams warm up. Oh, Welcome. James Vu. It's back, Yum's <laughs> Oh my god. Going. No. Can we get some. Wow, maybe. Oh shit, how do you do this? Can you. Uh, we need to slow it down in a, even more. Uh, where do we have it? We want slow. Swarm up. Look James Wu uh, James Wow 
James Wolve. Mm. Oh my god, he, he should change the W and then it could be almost Volvo. Okay, that's... And with the fun. James Wu or James Wow is talking now. ...to Australia, to Melbourne very soon, which is one of my... God damn it, they could have points. And then Haas get more points, that's so depressing. Why are they doing Formula 1 with their bad car? My favourite places to go racing, it's a brilliant track, it's an incredible atmosphere with hundreds of thousands of people coming every single day to see us race around the track. And it's also been a track that's been good to us in the past. You saw in 2023 with a car that wasn't as good as this year, we were still able to compete somewhere near the front and there was absolutely points of it. I hope you will get some points, I mean, three races where you can could maybe I got points and you still haven't. Available. So you also saw it was a chaotic race and that that comes in Melbourne. Often when I've gone there, one day's been incredibly like hot, the next day's been very, very cool. And and predicting those weather changes is quite important to getting the right car on Sunday for the oh, race. Shit. So from our perspective, Stop. there's lots of performance still locked in the package that we have, and we hope to deliver a lot of that in Melbourne. Celebrate the Australian Oh my gosh, so fucking much music. Can we just have him talking, please? Cap double act. I don't care. Coffee culture. Coffee. Recap. Is this just ads? The fuck? Yeah, my hair cut, so looking sharp. Okay. Shall we? Yeah, give us a clap. I'm Gay Tosigo, race engineer for Logan Sergeant. Ha! <laughs> uh, just, in, just here. <laughs> no! So, what did you do on the, the race? Uh, no, James is at home. He has to stay at home, work for home today. He's going to be traveling to, to Melbourne. He hasn't forgotten about anyone from the audience. He's missing you. I'm sure you're missing him a lot. He's a lot more fun than me. Well, is when it? we're together, we're more fun. Alone, we're a bit boring, but no, he'll be back soon. We're like this, don't worry. Yeah, and it's really good to, to, to be back, to have a week. You can have a bit more time to do things in details, your, your job, and then you're back in the deal with the race driver to prepare the coming events. And you also have the opportunity to be a bit at home, enjoy your family, and most of ours, as we got like Friday off, so it's a bit of an extended weekend and you can reset and be ready for Melbourne because we go to morning at five in the morning, so that's quite early, early trip. I don't think it was disappointing. It obviously miss a point. And uh, with short crashing, you had the opportunity for one of the non-top five team to score, which as did with the comeback and in fairness, they, they made what probably a lot of us would have tried to, to do. They had a good strategy, Magnussen, you can maybe wonder. Oh yeah, that, I think Alex Albon said. Um. Going, uh, to the pits early was a bad idea. They should have maybe stayed out longer. Or five would go, but he he did a good job and they ultimately came back home with a point. If we look at our performance, I think that without what Magnussen did, we were probably one of the strongest team to be in line to score that point. You cannot be disappointed about the fact that you could have scored point if you had operated the car normally in Bahrain and you were in a position to score points again in Jeddah. So I think the fights is very much on with quite a few teams, but we're putting the fights with them. So that, that's good, I think. Ha! <laughs> We, all the factories pushing really hard, everybody's pushing really hard. We know how FW46 is better than the 45, but we know also what needs to be improved. So everybody at the factory design office, I wrote, they're working really hard to bring updates and there are gonna be updates very soon, but I cannot be more in detail, sorry. Very different, it's on the other side of the world. It's a two day trip to go and two day trip back and you stay there four days, so it's as much traveling as you stay there. Melbourne is amazing. It's a non-permanent track. It's an amazing track. It's not a city track as per se like Monaco or Jeddah, but it is between walls. Walls are close by, so any mistake can be very costly. There's a very large track you go because it's not permanent track. The weather is always a factor. I think a week ago it was more than 30 degrees and we're gonna go there. It's gonna be 15 to 20 risk of rain, so 
it's always a factor. It's a track that race drivers don't know that well because they only race it when they go most of the time in, in F1. No, F2 goes as well, which is good for the young drivers. But it's going to be only the second visit for Logan, for example. So there's still a lot to learn. But yeah, I, I think I think it's, it's an amazing track. Very high speed uh, section in the middle of the track, but also some low speed corners. Very difficult. Uh, quite twisty at the end of the lap, so you can easily make a mistake as you try to close the lap and just mess up a bit from a very clean lap to do mistake on the pin and pin corner, for example. So challenging track, amazing track. Points, I think. We we need, again, I think we, we said it before Jeddah, uh -huh. we want to be that team that is in position to score points if anything happens in the top five teams. So we need to be in that position again. Everyone had a long winter at the factory. They worked really hard to bring the car in time for testing the first races and for us to have a race quantity. They're still pushing really hard. I don't think they have a break, but they're a bit. Everyone is uh, pushing really hard. Logan is good. I think it's always a bit frustrating when you, you have a weekend where you don't think you oh. put everything. But we, we're trying again in Melbourne, and I think he likes Melbourne. I think he, he did well in Melbourne last year until the restart where there was an incident. But he's definitely going to be beat. He's definitely going to be there, and he's going to give everything. He's good. No, stop music. On the way of Heinz and first to finish a one love Jacques Ville with Damon Hill and Jacques Villeneuve securing a one two finish for Williams Racing. And further podium finishes have also come the way of in Grand Prix, Capital, T4, Major, Kiel, Slover, Place to Admire, Silverstone, Montreal, hoping for WilliamsF1.com or on the official Williams Race. Leave it. Okay, so that was just. Okay, let's see. What's it? Oh, warm up. He says that. Let's see. This could be maybe more fun then. He says that with like bitterness. <laughs> How you going, boys? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Shrimp on the Barbie. What better way than to run out of land and run from one? Um, we are behind us. Is the pop-up store? Um, we're gonna make. Hello everyone, this is... <laughs> so Logan Sargent isn't in the... Oh my god, he's been replaced even in, in the podcast. This is Team Talk, episode 3. We're here in oh, Melbourne. Team Talk. Um, we are behind us is the pop-up store. Um, we're going to make this pretty quick and brief because <laughs> we've got some fans waiting for us behind. I should um, have quite a few fans, to be fair. We do have a few fans. And we have replaced Logan with my lovely... Oh shit. ...trainer, performance coach, is how he likes to be termed. He says that with like bitterness. <laughs> no, the no. First, first three <laughs> years he used to call me his masseuse. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and he used to drive me insane. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, basically we're just gonna have a little bit of a chat. Um, obviously we are in Australia. I have touched on my accent since last time, which I think uh, people weren't that impressed by. I have got better. We yeah. did, we did, did some we, practice this morning. We were in the gym this morning and um, we were with Oscar and uh, Oscar's trainer, him. Um, who, by the way, is one of the worst paddle players. We said Oscar was bad, but Kim yeah, is Kim's slightly worse. worse yeah. he is. I mean, no, I wouldn't even say slightly. I would say <laughs> significantly worse. And I did show them my accent. They were pretty impressed. It kind of took you a couple of seconds yeah, yeah, to get yeah. into it. I had to get into the rhythm. I had to really... Yeah. Um, your method, harness your the, method actor. <laughs> exactly. I just vibe off, off Oscar and, and yeah, Kim, that's and, it. and then I got it. Um, but anyway, we're going to bring on our first guest. I think... Um, just in general, Patrick, you must be a better versed in this. So I'm going to let you take over the yeah. round. <laughs> He's chucking that one to me already. <laughs> yeah. Are we, we're skipping the recap of Saudi. Saudi. Oh, do we want to talk about Saudi? Saudi's the vibe. Um, Saudi was the vibe. <laughs> Saudi was the vibe. There's it, never a truer word said. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't how we wanted it to go. Um, it, it, but, I mean, in terms of execution from... It was you, yeah. Oh my god, there's so many yes. more fish to yeah. pick up. Yeah. We, we did a good job. I think we did realistically the best job we could have done. Yeah. I don't think there was much more else in it. I think um, some 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 sneaky tactics from some other teams. But otherwise... They were yeah, true. Well, nothing no unmentioned. To be honest with you, <laughs> <laughs> we would... But... Nate. <laughs> yeah, Hoss. Man, they ruined some 
points for Williams. I've done the same, a hundred times <laughs> yeah. over. I would have done the same. So, uh, so no, no. You would maybe have done the same, but not the same as Kevin Magnussen. You would not have. I mean, force people off and crash into people to get your place, and then you ruin the race after that. You, you will have get past them cleanly, and then you will have ruined the race. No love lost. Yeah, so watch uh, out, Kev. So watch out, Kev. Okay, let's introduce our guest. Well, this is our first true guest on the show. Um, that's no, that, that, non, that, that's, no, caveat that way, like non-team member. Non-team member, yeah, yeah. non-team member. Non -team member. Um, so Ned, please come on. Here he is. A round of applause. <laughs> non-team member, hi. So we have an Australian Aussie legend. <laughs> I mean, get these on right. How does, yeah. it, how does the sound? sound hey, down, boys. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's an accident. No, well, that's how it's done. Lean into it. <laughs> how are you, boys? Very good. What's Damn your um, when someone tries to do an Aussie accent? Yep. What's your reaction? Do you get offended? Um, no, I don't get offended at all. I kind of, okay. I kind of like it. I um, I oh, know. I think well, it does sound. Yeah, a I haven't bit... heard mine yet. Yeah, go Wrong on. Place. Ready? No, no, no. I'm not gonna do it. I think it's a um, it's endearing if someone has a crack. At... Yeah, I think lost team talk. It is the team. Okay, the we are known for that. I think he did or tried really badly. Do his was it Australian accent? <laughs> so let's see. If but it's nice. It's good. Yeah. But what? usually it's like they're they're more mimicking as opposed to uh True. doing it properly. Yeah. You know? So like I'm Irish and I get like to be sure to be sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no one says that, do they? Or do they? No, in Ireland, no, no one has ever no, no, said no. that. But every Aussie uh, ever uh, who or anybody yeah. just worldwide. <laughs> so I what agree. what is the Aussie phrase that people would chuck at you? Um. Oh, the Shrimp on the Barbie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so not the good eye, mate. What is the other one? I just think, how are you going? And I yeah. think anywhere other than Australia in the world, you get people looking at you like, what the hell did you just say? Yeah. Um, but Aussies love it. Well, yeah, I think yeah. in Europe, certainly as I grew up, we had two shows that like were Aussie culture to us, Home and Away and Neighbours. Yeah. So Perfect. that was what? our, yeah, that was our playbook. Can't say I ever watched either, but yeah. No, well, I think they're a little bit before your time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how are you boys going? You good? Very good, yeah, thank good. you. Bit jet lag you were saying before? Yeah, so we got here, um, I got here a day earlier than Patrick, yeah. so we've been, um, we get here as early as we can, Blue we have a jet lag. Um, so what we do is we Rain do pink. a couple of days on the, in the simulator, yep. getting ready for the circuit. Um, being a street track, it's a little Rain bit harder yellow. to Fuck. get up to speed because it street tracks, so right. there's a bit more confidence yeah, right. to do with it. Gotcha. Pro up to speed as in you're not quite, you exactly. can't get the With the walls there, and everything, it oh just gets a different to, to it will be optimal in terms of gotcha. driving. So, a bit more time in the simulator for a street race. Yep. And um, go out here. Do have more buckets? The jet lag's tough. Yeah, right. right. Really tough. It's We're in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? We are. It's crazy. I, I would say Melbourne. I would live here 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, would, I, love, I love Melbourne, but just yeah. middle of nowhere. Far away. A lot of Thai people come to Melbourne. Right. We have, I mean, we had Thai food last night, um, but it's actually How close to relative to other countries. So right. a lot of Thai people come to study here, and um, yeah, I know a lot of Thai people who, who live in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever. So. Yeah, it's nice, good food, and uh, hot. It is hot. Way hotter than last yeah, year. It's humid. Yeah, yeah. Was it, really humid. Was today. it? I would say in, it didn't look because maybe it was in the morning, but Formula 3 and Formula 2, it looked like it was raining. So maybe more on the day if it was more hot. hot. when you ran through... <laughs> Across, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was <laughs> silly yeah. question. What, what yeah. a but, segue. But when, but when, when did you, when, what, like time of year, mm -hmm. did you plan it to not be... No, so uh, the thing about this is there's no right or wrong time to do it. You just have to, and it's, right. you know, weather is going to happen. Uh, things yeah, like that are going to happen. You just have to deal with it when it comes. Okay. It's always a uh, future Ned's sure. problem. You don't think about it, whatever's <laughs> yeah. happening at the moment. Like That's what it. we deal with. I like that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hit a day of 44 degrees, which was oh, oh degrees God. Celsius. I don't know what you guys yeah, do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, it was, it was basically from 
uh, midday onwards, I had the sun to my back for the whole rest of the oh, afternoon. So I had I'm blisters growing on the back of my arms and, this and me? back of my legs just popping as I was putting sunscreen on. So like, just for a bit of background for some of the people back uh, Yeah, who is this guy, maybe? Uh, Europe, who maybe not know the story. So you did two, so you did one which was Perth to uh, Sydney, so you ran across yep. Australia. Yep. Yeah. And the other one was 50 marathon. So it's a runner. Did it really wait? Oh yeah, here's a endurance athlete and change maker. Change, change your mind. <laughs> so he's a uh, political streamer. Right. How's, yeah. it, how's the sound? Sounds hey, I was getting 100 kilometers done in a day. All of that. Yeah, ran all That's that. Um, Longest chunk of desert. The other? Amazing. Which was Perth to Sydney. So you ran across yep. Australia. Yep. Yeah. And the other one was 50 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know a lot of Thai people who, who, who live in Melbourne my or mind. Sydney or wherever. So. Yeah. It's nice. Good food. And uh, hot. Alonso did. Hot. Way hot. Not a bad thing to Russell. Changed my mind. Hotter than last yeah, year. It's humid. Yeah. yeah. Was it really humid? Was today. it hot when you ran through? Oh my god! Fuck me. Where was it? Did I really hot? So? The two shores that like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. What is the other one? I just think, hey, you going? And I yeah. think anywhere other than Australia in the world, you All get right. people looking at you like, what the hell did you just say? Yeah. Um, but Aussies love it. Well, hey, I think yeah. in Europe, certainly as I grew up, we had two oh, shores. Fuck me. How are you boys going? You good? Very good, yeah, thank good. you. A bit yeah. jet lagged, you were saying before? Yeah, so we got here, um, I got here a day earlier than Patrick, yeah. so no, we've been... Um, wrong place. We get here as early as we can, just yep. the jet lag. Um, so what we do is we do a couple of days in the, in the simulator, yep. getting ready for the circuit. Um, being a street track, it's a little bit harder to get up to speed because it's street track, so right. there's a bit more confidence to do with it. Gotcha. So up to speed as in you're not... Quite exactly, with yeah. the walls there and everything, it just takes a little bit longer to, to be up optimal in terms of gotcha. driving. So, a bit more time in the Yeah, and then the crash. Um, wait, this. Simulator. Or it, was this before or after? It must be after. So, I mean, he not lying when he say it's harder to get up to speed because. He never did. It's the first street race. Yep. At least in quarter um, one. Throughout here. I like quarter. The jet lag's tough. Practice yeah, right. one. Really tough. It's We're in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? We are. It's crazy. I, I would say Melbourne. I would live here 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I, love, I love Melbourne, but just... You're tough. Far away from everywhere. Really. A lot of Thai people come to Melbourne. Like right. We have, I mean, we had Thai food last night, um, but it's actually How close to relative to other countries so right. a lot of Thai people come to study here and um, yeah I know a lot of Thai people who live in Melbourne or Sydney or whatever so. yeah it's nice good food and uh, hot it is hot way hotter than last yeah, year it's humid yeah, yeah. Was it, really humid was today. it hot when you ran through <laughs> across yeah, yeah. Uh, it was <laughs> yeah, silly what, question what, yeah. uh, but, but when, but when, no, when no. did you <laughs> when, what, like time of year mm -hmm. did you plan it should not be no so uh the thing about this is there's no right or wrong time to do it you just have to and it's right. you know weather is going to happen uh things yeah, like that are going to happen you just have to deal with it when it comes Amazing. it's always uh future ned's problem you don't think about it whatever's <laughs> yeah. happening at the moment I that's like what it. we deal with i like that yeah. um but yeah i i hit a day of 44 degrees which was oh, oh degrees God. celsius i don't know what you guys yeah, do yeah, 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 yeah. um i yeah it was it was basically from uh, midday onwards, I had the sun to my back for the whole rest of the oh. afternoon. So I had blisters growing on the back of my arms and oh. back of my legs just Sounds popping beautiful. as I was putting sunscreen on. So like, just for a bit of background for well, some of the people. Now we're finally back where we were. Uh, Europe, who maybe not know the story. So you did two, so you did one, which was Perth to uh, Sydney. So you ran across yep. Australia. Yep. Yeah. And the other one was 50 marathons in 50 days. Yeah, while working uh, wow. my eight hour day on the tools. <laughs> so yeah, I did the wow. 50 marathons, 50 days in 2020. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then raised a hundred thousand dollars for homelessness that was it yeah. and then uh, i went on to go bigger what what better <laughs> way than to run out of land and run fishers. from one side of the country to the other amazing i lived in australia for a couple of years yep. a few years ago and me and some mates drove across fish. australia long big country did you like run across the nullarbor 
Yeah, we did. Had to. Oh, so the most direct route. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a long flight. Um, yeah. So, so how... What, Nullarbor is like a massive chunk of desert between Perth and Adelaide. It essentially okay, means okay. no trees in Wiradjuri. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Then it and literally means oh. there's no tree. There's oh. one section of road and Man, it's 149 kilometres long. Yeah. And it's the longest stretch of straight, straight road. road in the world. Yeah. Yeah. There's like zero degree de de deviation and there's wow. a sign at the front which yeah. is like <laughs> Good luck, straight. 90 miles straight. <laughs> literally. Yeah. So you ran all of that? Yeah, ran all That's that. Um, yeah, there was days out there much harder than others. Yeah. There was uh, 50k fun. an hour headwinds. I know you probably deal oh, with yeah. winds a lot. Um, but oh. yeah, it was one of those... He's not running though, he's <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. car. I got a nice yeah. engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aerodynamics. <laughs> Dude, tell you what, I was pretty aerodynamic by the time I hit the null because I, I lost 12 kilos on the run. Uh, so, wow. um, so yeah, it's a good way to lose weight if you want to do it. Like so many questions about that, but kind of when we're in the practicalities of it, like what is your calorie count for that day? Yeah, so I was so burning anywhere from, so if I was getting 100 kilometers done in a day, I would burn upwards of 12,000 calories a day. So what, what is a meal? Give us, like, yeah. what will you okay. eat, like? A glass of water and maybe some um, sandwich. Here maybe? we go, ready? So bacon egg rolls times two in the morning. Yeah. Oats um, with a ton of brown sugar, yeah. berries, anything I can yeah. get on. The best food to eat is the one you can actually eat. Like you can think there's the, you know, there's nuts and there's all these things, yeah. the calorie dense and nutrients, but essentially the last thing you want to eat is something in. that is yeah. worth eating. Um, so yeah, whatever you can get in, yeah. but also lack of resources out in the Nullarbor, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like... A chili pepper, maybe. The hottest pepper in the world, maybe. Uh, what more fun? Oh, the food that make you have a really bad stomach, maybe. It's like to be good. Um, to eat. We're basically eating chicken schnitzels from the pub and steaks and <laughs> yeah, pies, yeah, and yeah. ham and cheese croissants, and yeah, anything I could get my hands on. Literally. But because I was only, I was probably eating, uh, consuming eight to nine thousand. I was still in a uh, deficit of, of three thousand calories. So, yeah, I just faded away like that. Any muscle I had was gone. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. What are you weighing in at? What do you have to be at? We are we're on some kind of strict regimen just because I'm quite tall for racing drivers. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. When we with that height, carry some weight, but I have to be about 73 kilos dry, right? More or less. Um, you start the winter training. We call it bulking, but just yeah. pretty much getting to a normal gotcha. weight. Yeah. And then as the as the year goes on, we just not, not in the same way, but we, we tend to shred just because um, yeah, yeah, yeah. with all the stuff that we do around racing and the traveling and all this kind of thing, you don't actually get much time to, to train, to of really course. put on muscle and, and keep. So a lot of it's just maintenance, trying, yeah. to, trying to hoard it as long as you can. We've got little periods, like three week breaks in between yep. during summer break where we try to get back. Yep. Um, by the final race, you're kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. gone. Yeah, there you are. Exactly. And that's obviously your role. That's yeah, it. absolutely. So yeah. like we'll spend January and February trying to put on two or three kilos of muscle mass yep. just to create a little bit of a buffer yep. um, and then like Alex said he'll probably have lost two, two and a half difference? kilos of that by August mm. and then we have three weeks to we'll try and put another one on yeah. one and a half and then you're holding on to the end of the season crazy so how long's your season go for we started um, basically mid mid head yeah and we'll finish yeah. um, you've already done mid. two this is your third this is our third yeah yep. and then we'll finish early December yeah, we are. So it's quite long. Absolutely. It's weird because you, you, you get, you call it racing fit, and then there's like, yeah. or fit, fit, you know, physical fit. Of course. So, but first yeah, like So will all this be just talking about, I mean, of course if he's there talking about the running, but holy shit. Like match fit, like anything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So first race, we're actually in terms of strength training and cardio training, we're at yeah. our peak because it's, it's kind of, you spent all that winter to train and then yeah. once you get to the, the final race, that's all gone. Yeah. But neck strength, core strength, mm. and just general, okay. even all just the way that the you can stuff will go there. hold a race. And, and even though you're fatigued during the end of the season, you're still fine during mm. racing, two hours or whatever. Which is fine. One thing that intrigues me is like, you know, you've. It looks like a really cool life. It looks like, you know, amazing. You get flown everywhere, you get to see all these things, drive fast cars, it's amazing, right? But one thing that would really, really, and I, it consumes me, like even though I'm only flying from Melbourne to Sydney or Sydney to Brisbane or like the traveling alone, the lack of structure around my life when I have a training block 
and then I've got actually life to do around it. Yeah. How do yeah. you deal with I mean, like, I can't imagine you doing the, the work and then the marathons afterwards. That seems Yeah, insane. well, that, that's something. I mean, in order to get to where I am now, I kind of had to do that sacrifice, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. go off three hours of sleep a night. That was what it was. Wow. Um, and yeah, so I'd have to work for eight hours, go and run. So is this a ad for your uh, start doing this doing or not? 42K and do it all again. Oh. Um, but that's one thing I, I can... Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. associate yeah. with is like I don't I don't know how it's, you guys do it. Do you have a lot of downtime? Not not many, and, it, and it's all down to organisation. Mm. Yeah. So I'm very lucky. I have a team around. Of um, course. And honestly, Patrick's the most involved in that. Is mm. we'll we'll do jet lag. There's a lot of really good research about how to mitigate jet lag yep. as much as possible. Yep. And we'll do plans that are literally hour by hour. This Crazy. is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you. And you can follow that perfectly. But it's still net. Yeah. It, there's still an impact. Of course. Yeah. So when you add in that amount of time zones shift yep. east and west yep it, it accumulates and then like the stress but also the pressure of performing i can mm. imagine is something you weirdly that's when you're at your easiest yeah, yeah. right i would say yeah that's like that's yeah you're that's in my a, normal that's happy that's, place that's completely great so yeah. so i think it's like everything formula one actually when i when i when i went into formula one yeah the easiest thing was the performance side yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the, what i've been i've, I've done it because you yearn for it you just exactly. can't wait to get in the car exactly, and go again. exactly. Yeah. And, and the feeling of pressure is but I'm, I'm used makes to. diamonds baby exactly yeah. <laughs> there you go. It, is that what you feel when you're running is, Mate, is that is that your piece yeah. is when you're out so out i wouldn't out say out. when i'm running but when i have an event that i'm okay when i'm finally in the event i had a i did a podcast the other day where i was talking about um the lead up to my run across australia i was so almost just like a um little cage lion almost just mm. like let me go let me go let me go yeah. as soon as i got to cottezo which is in perth yeah, yeah. it was like i felt free because I'm finally there, I'm in it. I, yeah. I don't have to do. And then you can finally run, and then you can actually start having fun again. Do any more uh, talking? I don't have to do any more. It's like you have to do what you said you're gonna do. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, that yeah. for me is like the purest form of being alive. Yeah. And I'm yeah, sure yeah, you'd yeah. feel that yeah, in the car. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you're here, you're now. Let's go. We're on. And was it always like I will? You you, you never thought you'd fail in it. Or Not was, was once. There, was there? Okay. Yes. There was no pressure to to perform. There, there was the element of like. I mean, <laughs> for Lewis Hamilton, it's different. He knows as soon as he's in the Mercedes, he will fail. So he, he will have a really bad day. Like I had to get the what I said done, done, yes. and yeah. that that pressure was uh, something I really thrived on. Yeah. But there was never like that. Oh, I'm never going to get it done in my mind. It was always like. You're gonna get this done, regardless of what happens out on the run. Yeah. We'll adapt when that happens. Um, oh, but that will lose Hamilton in one half. <laughs> Whatever he does, the car will still be good. At, at the end of the day, I'm gonna to get to home. And I've seen you use a phrase which I've used quite a lot, and I really enjoy it, and I really like it, which is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yep. I yeah. love that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean for you? Well, I think essentially, like at its core, we're so you know, we have everything we could ever want in this yeah. world at the moment. Like it's instant dopamine. Or we, or we think we do. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, exactly right. We, we, you know, you get this instant dopamine hit from scrolling yeah. or you can go and order Uber Eats from a from your phone. You can sit on your couch and get delivered to you, literally to your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. It's like, we used to have to earn that yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So in order to grow, you have to suffer. In order to get anywhere you want to get, you have to endure, you have to sweat, you have to bleed. <laughs> Is this? Pro slavery, maybe. I mean, then you suffer a lot. Could be good. You have to feel those things, and the longer you can delay that feeling of attaining the thing, the more bliss your life will be. And so, mm. the more uncomfort, discomfort you can chase, yep. the greater feeling you have when you get it. And, and Ooh. I think many people will succeed to make some suffering no, happen we obviously talk about that a lot and, and you on your journey which is the biggest learning comes from the hardest moments of course yeah um and it's easy said it's easier said than done and, and that's mm. the key to it right it's the ability to be self-aware enough mm. and i guess to be open-minded enough to have people ask you difficult questions yep. or for you to look at yourself in the mirror and go well mm. where was Light i lacking in that yep. because yeah. and, and i would say of anybody i've ever worked with you probably went so far on the other end of that, which was 
you were always the first person to look at yourself and probably too much at times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But you've you've learned through that process to yeah. step away from that a little yeah, yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very true. It feels like um, oh my god, Pink I don't know, just Mangalta. time maturity, oh, yeah. age maturity yeah. helps a lot as well. Like going through them situations and also just yeah, that pink. self awareness yeah. is important. And then it's, pink it's social pink dividing what's yes yeah, what what what's too much and, yeah, and what's what's actually hurting yourself. Yeah, exactly. what's what's self reflection and what is just beating, beating yourself yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's such a simple thing of like, is this useful? Yeah, and, and that was it. it. And then it's like, okay, you know, okay, so this will like just be every I'm driver. Talking, maybe I yourself this will as well. be more fun. The, there's always areas and moments where you doubt yourself, mm -hmm. and actually you use that to motivate yourself, and, yep. and and that's the energy you get to, you know, over winter or whatever. You're just trying to improve and be better because sometimes it's not insecurity, but it's just mm. that kind of feeling like I'm not doing enough or I need yeah. to do more. Yeah, that drives you forward. And a hundred percent. But it's that self-talk, right? It's how yeah. do you deal with that self-talk? What do you tell yourself, but also how do you answer yourself? I think yeah, self-belief, yeah. yeah. self-belief in that. Um, that's one thing, you know, a lot of people, they want that self-belief. They go, how does someone go around being like, I'm, I see this, I, I want this and I'm going to do this. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people want that for themselves. But what it comes down to is, are you going to do those things when no one's watching? Are you going to do those yeah. things that only you can hold yourself accountable to, yeah. right? Like making your bed in the morning, uh, doing those things you said you're going to do time and time again without yeah. any accolades for achieving it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in those times of actually, you are on show, it's like, that's when that will show up. And that's the detail, right? And that's what we always come back to, which is do what you're doing right now and do it really well. Yeah. Everything else will look after itself. Of course, yeah. If yeah, you yeah, just yeah. focus on If it's meant detail. to be, it will be, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very cool. cool. Oh. Are you, by the way, are you listening to, to music when no, you're going through it's so Right now? Get no. Some <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I Fucking can hear you. <laughs> um, I, Yes and no. Okay. So, uh, for my first 10 days of the run yes. across Australia, I didn't yes. listen to anything. Okay. Wow. Yeah, for until like the last wow. 10Ks. So but for so a lot of 10 hours, yeah, head noise. To yourself. Bring it on. Yeah. It was like almost I use it as a reward for getting to a certain distance. Because okay. if you rely on it the moment you wake up, you're going to get, yeah. you know, you, what else can you claw on to yeah, get you okay. You try and find these little wins in everything, like, yeah. Yeah. just to that little degree. Yeah. Um, my pump up song, it'd have to be an ACDC. Mm -hmm. um, I, anything, Hell's Bells, Shoot the Thrill, or black, Back in Black. Wow. There you go. You've asked the wrong person. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't care. It's weird. <laughs> I don't listen to music before I drive or anything like that. So I, w I would say you enjoy Wait, music. Wait, no but... music before you eat? Or. <laughs> that would be something. Trying to look up a good music to listen to before you go to. Or when you go to the bathroom. That would be annoying. We really need to have a bad stomach, and then you need some good music before, or while you're doing your stuff. You don't use it, and then you can't find it. Is a motivation. Yeah, tool. that's very true. That's yeah. very true. So, what's your favorite type of music? Um, all that 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 depressing, sad stuff. Nice. <laughs> that gets Perfect. Me, that yeah. gets me going. I love it. That's really good. <laughs> Um, What's yours, Patrick? I'm, I'm a bit like that as well. I don't, like I don't utilize music for motivation. I enjoy music. Mm. I've always had a really strong connection to music. Um, I don't want to be too stereotypical, but I like the Pogues a lot. A pair of brown eyes. What is? I tend to always pick back to. Push again. Shane McGowan. Hi. Not shipping it. up to Boston. Dude, also dude. a really good <laughs> tune. Yeah. Absolutely. They're like an Irish band. Oh, Shane okay. But I will say. I don't want any more chickens. Like the golems. One day, a genocide will happen. Or just some bad dream and then just, for some reason, just disappear. And then you wake up and... All golems and chickens are gone. Yeah, um, you know a uh, fairy tale New York? Maybe, if I know. I know if I hear the sound. Are they, are they an old band? How old are you? Uh, He's old enough that he passed away last right. year, but yeah. so not that old. No, not you're older than me. <laughs> oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not How old are you? I'm 25. No way. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> really? Wait. Who is? You've yeah. accomplished a lot. I'm at I'm a young age. <laughs> says, <laughs> says the guy. No, but says, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs>
Yeah, true. It's weird because our, our lives are kind of generally they're not. Yeah, it's not that they're no. taken care of, but for the most part, we're kind of in this cycle where I feel like. Oh, the barrel. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. I feel I'm 27, but I feel 15. I feel like I've mm. been I've been in in a in a circle, mm. this racing circle for so long, mm. and it's just strange because you know even like, I mean of course there's a lot of stuff we do. But oh, I'm I need to find that wandering, wandering track there. <laughs> it's the biggest place I get my free box from. So I have. Oh my god, I'm... God damn it. More fishes to place down. Well, not place down. Place in the... The chest. Things, but... But our, 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 our lives are formed quite early. Mm. And we kind of... Since seven, year, seven years old, eight years old, I've only done yeah, one yeah. thing. So in some ways you feel like... But you're like still this. being that kid that's yeah, and and it, that's what, it's like yeah we push ourselves to to what we do mm. but it's it doesn't go beyond that yeah but you you, you, you know? to assume that you're gonna make it to where you've oh, made yeah, it that was scary. you're in the point zero zero my self-made mob spawner that are really bad scared me Free XP for fun. One percent of that population. Mm. Yes, but it's it's strange how you know it's not like like yourself. Wake up and and go right. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna run across gonna, this <laughs> continent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, There's yeah. no. It's kind of like you perform, you perform, you perform. Next Still year, you get an opportunity to drive for a different team. You perform, you perform. <laughs> it's just this kind of. It's just different context. It is. It yeah. is very different. But um, maybe that was just random rambling. No, I like it. That's good. My, uh, <laughs> my, 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 I'm very, very the polar opposite to that. Like I, I didn't. I, I only started running three years ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so this has been, been a three years ago. Why? A, a desire to push myself to the absolute limit, and yes. I've had to create this life for myself. Yeah. Because I was going to be a sparky, I was going to be just an electrician, yeah. go do the thing you yeah. always do. And it was like, it just didn't feel enough for me. So I reckon I had this probably innate wow. yearning to want to go do, do more. You. And it's like, when I felt I could do more, I was like, let's go. Wow. What was the trigger for that? Yeah. As in the more bit, right? So it's yeah. the having the feeling versus doing the action. I think right. like the, the small, like winning the small things and continuing yeah. to win. Huh. Almost yeah. like achieving the small things. Again and again and again, and they, they became bigger, so it yeah. all became relative. And now, yeah. doing what I've done is the largest thing I've ever done. But when I do the next thing, it'll be the yeah. next. Yeah. You know? Okay, that's a good one. What's, yeah. the next, what's the next thing? Then? Um, I've got a big one in October. Really? Um, yeah. And now, yeah. no, very, very big. Oh, okay. uh, about to be announced. Very okay. exciting. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right, we'll leave it there. Okay. We didn't, we didn't even get to acknowledge the greatest mullet I've ever seen. <laughs> that is true. Um, Aussies love their mullets, eh? They do. I need to get one. You've I've got a haircut book tomorrow. I've kind of... I think I'm I reckon, should go I lean into it. Get a mullet. Just <laughs> I reckon like, like, half just a little yeah, over yeah, the ear yeah. mullet. Little don't, and then after the weekend, you can I was, tidy if, it if up. If you came here last year, I was blonde. I, I, my hair really? was that colour. Uh, we should have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a mullet, mate. There's still time. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you, boys. Thank you so much. Yeah, for yeah thank, thank you for joining us. And good luck this weekend. Thank you. You're going to come to the race. I'll be there Saturday, Sunday. Good. Running the track. Yeah. He's actually going to do. He's going to do the race distance. <laughs> just, did, just running. You see him in Q1, just sprinting around. <laughs> awesome Soft tire on his shoulder. Okay, that. Mm. The race clip could have been better than this was. Oh my god, I thought it would be some fun stuff than just talking about running. Why? So you make vlogger so you don't not be able to drive and then you kick him out from the talk also. Okay, but now it's actually time for some 
thinking about Williams by Aiden Millward. And here we have spread feast and spares, pinions and pinions, catch traffic, or certainly like GP week. And I mean, uh, what's it called? Oh my god, my memory. The greatest man there, Peter Windsor. There, there we have the name. Let's go back. He can't believe how Williams can be so bad so they don't have a spare car, but he's not surprised them not winning races or winning construction ships. So I don't know. For some reasons, that's weird. But I wouldn't say it's super weird. I mean, if you're trying to make the best car ever and you're trying to wait wait so much you can by m actually making a car, surely you will have only one car made and nothing to spare. I mean, it's like being surprised that some people wait the last day to actually do their homework. Um, needs to spend the the time of their sleeping time to finish it. I mean, is that a surprise now? Okay. And will the homework then also be bad? Yes. Or the preparation for a test or something? Yes, it would be bad, but hey, last day. Some, I mean, uh, someday you need to do it. Why not the last? Oh, this will go back, because I have one brown orange, brown orange. It seems that for the second year in a row we've had an Australian Grand Prix that was a bit of a meme, although at least this time... What's Williams is such a big meme? Maybe. We've got something slightly different to talk about. Last year was an embarrassment, one of those occasions where it seemed like for yet another time, Formula One had gone for the last lap sprint, or last two yeah, laps. Yeah, that was a big joke. I mean, why? And the funny, f funniest thing about this, they made the red flag because safety, because Kevin Magnussen was in such a bad spot, or it was the biggest nightmare ever for the... Fear. So they make the red flag and then this happened. Wow, where were the safety then? Nowhere. Lap sprint and it all kicked off on the final restart. So that race ended behind the safety car, whatever happened. I know a lot of people were quoting that. They don't want to end with a safety car, so they make it red flag and then they start and then ends with a safety car. Nice. That's. I mean, brilliant. That old adage for the show, oh, shit, as it was Ruth. WWF1 or Formula and Netflix at its peak. But this year we had something happen that went a little bit differently, and it caused a lot of discussion on track and off it at the same time. In practice, Alex... Oh yeah, Logan Sorry didn't get to drive, but who cares? Points... Albon wiped out and table. utterly trashed his car. It's one of those things that happens. Mistakes are part of the sport. So long as the driver isn't hurt, then, well, that's the most important bit, isn't it? If you've got an injured uh, driver, like then you have a problem. Fucking... Especially when Albon is clearly the better driver of the two Williams drivers, and True. he's on the other side of the planet. So you can't really get a replacement out in time. The accident happened here on the exit of Turn 5. Albon got onto that Astro turf on the edge of the kerb, and he lost control. He didn't actually touch grass like most F1 fans on social media should probably do, but he. St <laughs> Wait, he didn't. I feel like he touched a lot of grass, maybe. Maybe my. Still got a tank slapper on, although a tank slapper isn't the actual operative term here, but it's what they call it. It is what it is. Yeah, sure. It was very reminiscent of when Bottas shunted back in 2018 or 2019, whenever it was, when he had something similar happen on the exit of Turn 2 in qualifying. But like the end result was the car smacking into the wall on the right and then back across the track to the other side and spraying carbon fibre over the immediate postcode. 
Funnily enough, that's the same corner where Russell binned it in the race and ended up partially upside down. Now this is where things get interesting because it turns out that Williams didn't have the spare car with them in Australia, which opened up a whole new discussion in the immediate aftermath, or when people in Europe woke up to find out what had happened at least. In the good old days when cars were dressed up like cigarette packets and back in the days when Williams was winning, Sag, teams travelled with three cars. Actually true, the good old times, Williams, McLaren, a Ferrari on top. Hopefully, this will one day be again. Cars. One car for driver A, one car for driver B, and a third car. A this spare. was often called the spare car, the third car, the test car, the T car, depending on who was speaking. The T car could be used from anything from a test mule to break in so, a new yeah. engine, test a new gearbox, run a new aero package, no. and it was, at least at the time, more convenient for the teams to have the third car there with this new aero package on for. You know, just a, a random example here, than it was to strip down one car, apply stuff, and then strip it down and revert to how it was if that new stuff didn't work properly. Or it can be used as an opportunity for a driver to get back into a race if his car is wiped out at the first start and that start is null and void. So it was basically there as a backup plan, insurance policy, whatever you want to call it. All the teams had one. Didn't matter if it was the rich boys like Williams, McLaren or Ferrari, or even the minnows of Minardi, Arrows or whoever. Now some teams might not have had one if they were really cash strapped. Life, for instance, they only had that one chassis for the whole season, Andrea Moda too. But even Tyrrell in 1998, when they were at their most broke, had one. Tora Takagi used it at the Belgian Grand Prix when he was involved in that multi-car pileup at the start. And actually, this is something where the spare car could cause some issues. They only had one. And if two drivers were wiped out, then it was down to the team who got the spare. In that. Oh. So. Alban would get the spare car every day if they both crash out. Instance with the 1998 Belgian Grand Prix, four drivers couldn't take the restart because the car had been allocated to their teammate for whatever reason. The Stewart was given to Verstappen because Barrichello sustained minor injuries, and the other three that didn't take the restart were Panis in the Prost, Salo in the Arrows, and Rosset in the Tyrrell. And this could all be down to drivers and relationships and politics and sponsorship and things like that. For instance, Ricardo Rossett at Tyrrell. That's well documented, especially the whole thing regarding Monaco 1998, which is something I need to look at in the future. People have been asking for the downfall of Tyrrell's story. Then you've got Pedro Diniz at Arrows. He had things like Parmalat sponsorship. He had, well, basically his dad's money. His dad owns the Brazilian version of Tesco or whatever it is. And then you've also got Olivier Panis. Okay, that one's a bit tricky to explain, but when you look at the qualifying standings, truly outqualified Panis, so that might be the reason there. At least that's the reason I'm going with. I just realized something from. Let's see, where is. No. It must be on the other side. That could be a that will fix a problem. We can fix another problem also. Yeah, here we have one block deep. Or like two blocks deep. I want one block deep. Oh wait. No it will not be a fix because how I change how the stars are. There are blocks on this window that aren't on the other side. God damn it. No fix. These days, the spare car travels like IKEA furniture that you've busted your back trying to lift off that shelf in the massive warehouse that you've walked what seems like 997 miles to get to. It's completely flat pack and this saves on shipping costs and remains flat pack until it is needed, all as part of Formula 1's current cost saving rules. It stops teams using that car as a test mule that we mentioned earlier. You can run three setups over three cars, pick which one works best and then copy it to the two race cars, if it is indeed the third one that worked the best. Long story short, oh Williams didn't have that car with- I wrong to the wrong- Oh my god. Let's see what will be the fastest way to go. Surely this way. With them. Having a spare car physically built and usable in your garage to be used in the event of a restart or for other purposes was banned for the 2008 season, along with the banning of things like traction control. 
these days you can only have two built cars in your garages at any one time and, as already mentioned, has to remain in bits unless there is a reason for it needing to be built. In Albon's case, the car was destroyed. There's probably someone out there that knows who the last driver was to take the spare in the event of a null and void start, but it's not something I'm prepared to trawl through Google for. Although, I did find fun. out some useful information as to how utterly mad that era of spare cars was. You know, just as a bit of extra... I mean, I've seen one clip of someone... Their first car doesn't seem like working. They're running to get a spare car. He got the information he should run back to his normal car. And then it's... It stands up he can't drive either of them for for reasons. History, trivia, story time, whatever you want to call it. I mentioned Schumacher and how he'd basically get the test car before Eddie or Rubens, and at most Grand Prix, he'd go out in one car, do a few laps, and then get out of that car, straight into the test car, and do another f <laughs> I mean why not? few laps. Literally, straight out of one, into the other, no messing about. So both runs would be done over the course of 15-20 minutes, just to see which car would suit him best for that particular Grand Prix. Man, that's amazing. Three. If you ever get to see some older footage of Grand Prix from back then, Murray, James Allen, whoever was covering the race, would often mention that he'd be qualifying in the spare car or something. <laughs> nice. That's, that's something because that chassis suited the track better. The days when you could just spray money up the wall, just like that. I think there were a couple of occasions where he qualified in the test car, but then the other car was better over long runs, so it's just one of those things that used to happen. There was also a time, at least up to a point, where some teams would bring a spare car for both drivers at somewhere like Monaco, you know, just in case. Now, speaking of Monaco, at the 1996 race, one of the 40s got destroyed, and then the spare was destroyed, and lack of spares meant it couldn't take the start. Montermini, I think it was. Yeah, it was, because Badoa later wiped out Villeneuve. Now, why they hadn't got it there has been explained by Williams' head muscly boy, James Vowles. The Williams car this year was late almost Ferrari 310 late, and as such didn't do the same shakedown runs that the other teams had done. Because the completion of the 2024 car had been done so late, they'd only managed to get two cars built. Ergo, no third car. Argo, Ben Affleck. Bowles said, As a result of the work that took place across the winter, we stressed the organisation to the absolute limits. We pushed everything as far as it could do, and what it meant as a result of that is off the back end of being very late on some of the... Yeah. So I don't know why you... Peter Windsor is so surprised if they clearly are waiting so much they can to make the car. I'm not, is that really a surprise that when they finally make the car that they will not have any spares? But no, the production, the spare chassis completion date starts to move backwards. No team plans to come to an event without a spare chassis. In doing so, you create risk. In the and that I've heard. That Williams could maybe have still not a spare car or a car for Logan Scar Sargent in Japan also. That I would say, okay, now, now it looks somewhat bad. Absolute best case, it's uncomfortable. In the worst case, one of the cars is not racing and that's the situation we face today. He followed that with, we have to ensure that we never ever put ourselves in that situation again going forward in the future. We are here to go racing and to only have one car here on Saturday and Sunday simply isn't what we're built to do. And all this as well comes off the back of the news that up until very recently, Williams wasn't using a database to inventory all of their stuff. They were using... God damn it. I'm gonna... Look at this. I mean, uh, some creature just leave their trash all over the place. And, and I mean, uh, that's something. But the worst part is, where do they... Where, where do they get the stuff from? Yeah, this place. So they ruined the... Yeah, the mountain, or what you can call it. And then they leave it. 
Oh, God damn it. And then you just leave it in where you work. So mean. Using a spreadsheet. Microsoft Excel is great. I've used it a few yes. times in these videos. Not maybe to 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 having Formula One, but I it's starting points. Whether that's for the videos where I visit a classic season with modern points, or I need to make a chart or some description, or it can take a modicum of pain out of doing complex calculations. I still get PTSD from that live sound system design module and the acoustics module at university every time I see my copy of the Master Handbook of Acoustics. For adding, subtracting and calculating, it's a very handy tool. Shit and for invoicing people. Williams was using Excel to do something that a database would have been way more efficient for and they were actually using the spreadsheet to design the 2023 car. When Vowles joined the team last year, he was shocked to find that around 20,000 components had been logged on a spreadsheet that was not just extremely inefficient, but was later described as a joke. And I wonder if he thought someone was having him on when he first saw it. The reason it was such a pain in the ass to navigate is because of how complex a Formula One car is. A front wing isn't just a front wing. It's the main plane, it's the different elements, it's the end plate, it's so maybe every part that you can remove this bit this bit this bit this screw this bolt this bit here this bit here and 400 or so bits later you've got your front wing having all that listed on a spreadsheet is going to be utter carnage to get through man i wonder if they will ever show the spreadsheet of the williams stuff could be interesting and is going to cause a bigger headache than Mick Foley had after The Rock smacked him 11 times in the face with a steel chair in that I Quit match. I mean, yes, you can have multiple tabs, pages, whatever you want to call them, on a spreadsheet, but when you need to track all those smaller individual parts and then tick them off one by one as they're done, you see where this gets insane? It's going to be even worse when you're a Formula One team of all things, and precision is key. And that's why today's video is brought to you by Slack. It's not actually brought to you by Slack. I wrote that in as a joke. I'm, I'm trying to be funny. But it shows how desperately Williams is in need of a modernization program. Their stuff is so behind the times and needs an update. Oh, I know what I can do now. Some snow placing while trying to get the wandering trading to spawn. Hi, and then I can also get this snow removed. Eight, a major update, and it will take a while because of the whole cost cap stuff. While this stuff probably worked back in 1998, things have now advanced so far that that kind of thing isn't something that they need right now. Getting a custom database for all of that stuff, what's that going to cost them? Telephone number. Also. It can be a something, <laughs> something really interesting, maybe just over there. You see one of them, but it could be more. A nightmare more. So let's not be close to that place. I don't know if it will lag, but it maybe could. As I'm guessing. So with all that part of William's background problems, things need to return to how they handle things in Melbourne after Albon's crash. It was Albon's birthday at the weekend and his present was... Logan Sargent. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, hopefully Logan Sargent's name stood on the... birthday... card car. I wish that was my joke, but Alex Jakes got there first. This caused a bit of a kerfuffle on the old Twitter sphere and comment sections up and down the land. Albon stacked it. Why should he get Logan's car? Because ha it's better. That's why. So How does easy. it work that Alex gets another go when he's already binned it? People who make supporting a driver their whole personality complaining just because they can. All that stuff. It was just one of those things, really. But this takes me back to an earlier part of this video. 
because, as already mentioned, I remember the days of the spare car, the T car, whatever we're calling it, and it would be written into some driver's contracts that the spare car would be theirs, no matter what. The Ferrari spare car from 1996 up until 2006 would have most likely been Michael's and set up for him, and if Eddie or Rubens ever needed it, then they'd have to cope mm. with how it was set up. If both Ferraris were done in a crash, you can absolutely guarantee Michael would get first dibs. A similar thing happened in 1986 when Mansell was taken out on the first lap of the British Grand Prix at Brands Hatch. The spare car was PK's and it was set up for him. Mansell took that car that was set up for his teammate and had been given to him contractually and then won the race in it. Although an asterisk does need to be added here because that contractual number one status was claimed by PK to have been done verbally with Frank but then Frank had his car accident and it made things a bit complicated. So for Williams, nearly 40 years later, there's a bit of a dilemma. Do they give the car to Alex even though he's already binned it? Do they keep it with Logan because it's Logan's car? Or do they give it to Alex because he's the better of the two drivers and more likely to score points? Which You give it to Alex Albon, 100%. Then left an open goal for them to be abused in comment sections when Albon finally finished that race in 11th. I mean, sure, there's, what, 21 races left now? Albon, if he did sit out, would have 21 other opportunities to take a point or two. But it's a case of what's going to happen later on in the season. Williams was probably taking a gamble on a late race safety car in Australia, a red flag or that sort of thing, and it could have left Albon in a position to take a point or two that could mean the difference later on as Williams plays a very long game. But on this occasion, he just missed out. Yep. But hopefully, Williams will have learned a very valuable lesson here. Get things updated, enter the modern world. I mean, thanks to James Wells, they probably will not have this problem again. Hopefully. World ...and just get things with the times. But they're not the only ones that have done this. Alpine were found to have been using a spreadsheet in a similar fashion a couple of years ago. And, well, I mean, Alpine's a bit different, isn't it? They're a big manufacturer while they're owned by Renault. Williams is still an independent team. Yeah, true. So even less surprising. It's just... I, I, it basically just means that Vowles and co just have a bigger job on their hands than they otherwise thought. So then, a look at what happened with Albon's crash, getting Logan's car, and the utter insanity that is the spreadsheet meme. Basically, a thing that has happened, and my opinions on that thing. So if this thing has made you think things about the thing, like this thing so I know a good job was done, and click the like thing and the subscribe thing, followed by the bell thing, if you want to see any thing that I do around here. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon for the support, and if you want to help support me at a more personal level, then a link to Patreon is in the description, along with links to Discord, socials, and other bits and pieces that you might want or need to know. Well, there's super thanks and memberships if they float your boat. Mm. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, have a cracking day wherever you live in the world, like and goodbye. That. Should not be removed. <sighs> well, so it could not be have been a problem. For even if they had a uh, spare part, or uh, spare car. There we have him! That didn't take long, finally. Yes, I want you. Do you sell? Yeah, you sell on, on the bad stuff. Yeah, you be quiet. I will get your leads one way or another, so don't be happy yet. Do you mean? Oh, hi. Oh shit, I need... God damn it. You live, leave. No, it will be too far to get him back.
you stay there, I will go and sleep. Good, anyway. No, you should attack him. So many mobs. Or many mobs. I've seen worse. Yeah, cows is moving. Where do we have the one that shouldn't be here? Go away. Oh, and then we can take that away. So much snow on me. And then we also want. No. <laughs> I mean, they will have a bucket, but I want another bucket. There we have a bucket. And then a creeper. Nope. Yes, he's still there. And we can get some free leads. Yes, I want you to... Oh, you... Did not buy... Pumpkin from you. Yes, I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah, do you want to stay still? Huh? No, come on. Oh shit. God damn it. Let's see, can we do it on the easy way? God damn it. Make it more easily. <laughs> oh shit. God damn it. Okay. Yes, this will not be your... <coughs> Why am I so lucky? <coughs> oh, okay, I know. <laughs> We can make it in the slow way.
They kill them. Yeah, they kill themselves or they kill him. It's a really slow progress, I know, because uh, I have seen some llama genocide between them. Get your friend. Come on. How come you don't hit each other? No, this is really slow. Uh -huh. Still, they just attack me. This. So mean. Bought everything I want. Oh, yeah, maybe that's why. I have five protection. That's why the lava every time I'm f falling down in lava. Oh, wait, when did they kill him? Oh, wait. I should have some stats on killing llamas. There, 266 llamas. So, I could have been part of... I mean, I maybe killed some, but <laughs> there have been more llamas that got killed that day. I'm mean, like, you only make so they shoot each other.
Ja, okay. Come on, someone can die, right? Slowest war ever. I mean, this war will happen a lot go faster if it was a lot more llamas, like 30 llamas each, attacking each other. Oh shit, I'm killing myself. And then 144 levels will just be gone. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter, so we can have this on. I need the leads. Le one lead. <sighs> one day wasted. Uh, let's see. And this was the last thing I wanted to watch. Let's see. Williams, could I? I mean, I ho really hope they will get m some good races with good points. And hopefully, for every year, they just become better and better. That's also interesting. Why do they want to trade it? Only want to. Well, because of the villager. That's your money. But here we have a lot of cows. Uh, well. Trying to see if we can get one llama killed. Nope, the f wasted war was for nothing. No, they were one of them. <coughs> Fucking creeper, go away. Uh, where is your friend? I want to talk to him.
Hmm, could this be one more? Yep. Some final word before. Do you get dropped? Maybe not. Mm. Oh, maybe they fixed that now. Mm. Man, no llamas kills yet. God damn it. Yeah, you will fall off and then disappear. I hope the other one have disappeared because this is just sad. Well, that's gone now, and we can finally... Yeah, remove the... I mean, putting the leads away... Can we put the bucket away for now? Probably put it back when another wonder trade is back. And then it's back to trying to make him disappear. Well, first we need to find a place where we can end the stream on. Yeah, hold this place, need to get some snow. Oh, now I can show people. Recognize the skin. Just behind me, could something one day be made? That this skin will uh, maybe. Be part of, maybe. Who knows? But yeah, I can play some more snow. So let's end.
And hopefully some more wonder train is arriving because we need some buckets. And that is the <laughs> most easily way of no, it's not. It's maybe the slowest and most God damn it, I can't get up. Oh my god, that could... That could have been bad. Luckily it wasn't, because that would be really sad and... Yeah, we understood. Okay, that was... Oh my god. I thought it would be more fun William stuff, but that wasn't... I mean, the only good thing I would say was... No, it wasn't. I mean, the r race clip. Why don't recovery struggling? I mean, that's... Uh, a lot of nothing. And then the Williams clip. The warm up and then the team talk. That was. Man. The whole clip was just talking about the running. Almost. So the only good thing was the last clip with uh, Aiden Milward. Uh, I mean, I've not seen anything new, so tomorrow will probably be the race podcast scuffed thumbnail clip with maybe Formula 1 uh, either podcast nation podcast thingy or Live reaction post race clip. I mean, 